This is a reading for the County Narrative um, Quarter 1. Directions. Today you will read a passage from The Open Boat by Stephen Crane. As you read the passage, gather information so you can write a narrative based on what you have read. From The Open Boat by Stephen Crane. When the correspondent again opened his eyes, the sea and the sky were each the gray hue of the dawning. Later, carmine and gold was painted upon the waters. The morning appeared finally in its splendor with a sky of pure blue and the sunlight flamed on the tips of the waves on the distant dunes were set many little black cottages and a tall white windmill reared above them no man nor dog nor bicycle appeared on the beach the cottages might have formed a deserted village the voyagers scanned the shore a conference was held in the boat well said the captain if no help is coming we might better try a run through the surf right away if we stay out here much longer we will be too weak to do anything for ourselves at all the others silently acquiesced okay. in this reasoning the boat was headed for the beach the correspondent wondered if none ever ascended the tall wind tower and if then they never looked seaward this tower was a giant standing with its back to the plight of the ants it re represented in a degree to the correspondent the serenity of nature amid the struggles of the individual nature in the wind and the nature in the vision of men she did not seem cruel to him then nor <clears throat> beneficent nor treacherous nor wise but she was indifferent flatly indifferent it is perhaps plausible that a man in this situation impressed with the unconcerned of the universe should see the innumerable flaws of his life and have them taste wickedly in his mind and wish for another chance a distinction between right and wrong seems absurdly clear to him then in this new ignorance of the grave edge and he understands that if he were given another opportunity he would mend his conduct and his words and be better and brighter during an introduction or at tea now boys said the captain she is going to swamp sure all we can do is work her in as far as possible and then when she swamps pile out and scramble for the beach keep cool now and don't jump till she swamps shore the oiler took the oars over his shoulder he scanned the surf captain he said i think i'd better bring her about and keep her head on to the seas and back her in all right billy said the captain back her in the oilers swung the boat then, and seated in the stern, the cook the and the correspondent were obliged to look over their shoulders to contemplate the lonely and indifferent shore. The monstrous inshore rollers heaved the boat high until the men were again enabled to see the white sheets of water scudding up the slanted beach. We won't get in very close, said the captain. Each time a man could rest his attention from the rollers, he turned his glance toward the shore, and in an expression of the eyes during this contemplation there was a singular quality. The correspondent, observing the others, knew that they were not afraid, but the full meaning of their glances was shrouded. As for himself, he was too tired to grapple fundamentally with the fact. He tried to coerce his mind into thinking of it, but the mind was dominated at this time by the muscles, and the muscles said they did not care. It merely occurred to him that if he should drown, it would be a shame. There were no hurried words, no pallor, no plain agitation. The men simply looked at the shore. Now remember to get well clear of the boat when you jump, said the captain. Seaward, the crest of a roller suddenly fell with a thunderous crash, and the long white comber came rolling down upon the boat. Steady now, said the captain. The men were silent. They turned their eyes from the shore to the comber and waited. The boat slid up the incline, leaped at the furious tapped, bounced over it, and swung down the long back of the wave. Some water had been shipped, and the cook bailed it out. But the next crest crashed also. The tumbling, boiling flood of white water caught the boat and whirled it almost perpendicular. Water swarmed at it from all sides. The correspondent had his hands on the gunwale at this time, and when the water entered that place, he swiftly withdrew his fingers, as if he objected to wetting them. The little boat, drunken with this weight of water, reeled and snuggled deeper into the sea. So prior to submitting your essay, click on the link at the bottom of the assignment to complete a survey. The narrative writing prompt. At the end of this passage from the open boat, the men are adrift at sea, but they see the shore. Using what you have learned from the passage, write an original third-person narrative that continues the story and reveals what happens next.